Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to go over my race three pack from Ironman Cairns, which was one of the hardest Ironmans I've ever done. Up until race week, I was really confident that I could uh, recover well enough for the race. Um, and I would say all the way up until this happened, I actually felt like I could actually uh, get through the race and actually finish, you know, in, a, in quite a good position. But um, as it turns out, you know, you can't rush the healing process and uh, your body will tell you when to stop. So um, yeah, look, I came into race week reasonably confident, um, had everything all together. My team was really tight. We had a plan. I knew what I wanted to do. Um, at the end of the day, my coach said, it's just another race. It's, you should be proud to be on the start line. But I think for me being the defending champion of the race, you always want to come and give it your best crack. And so, um, yeah, I just was tried to be brave and just started on the start line. But there was always that element of Geez, I hope this all comes together because I just didn't know. Normally when I start a race, I know exactly like what I'm capable of at this point in time. And for this race, due to, due to various factors, not just the accident, changing coaches, um, and then also, um, you know, having like little, all these little things, interruptions, I guess, with, um, you know, the melanoma removed and everything else. Um, one thing I do know that's for sure is that I think if the race was half the distance, it would have been a very different story for me. Um, but yeah, I think just the amount of uh, energy is required over a longer distance was probably just too much for me to be able to put forward my best performance on race day. And so, yeah, things like the, the vomit at seven hours or, you know, a few hours into an hour or so into the run is what kind of is your body telling you that you're just not there yet. And so, yeah, I mean, from, from an actual from the actual race, I guess, you know, I was really ready to get, ready to go. I, we, were, we actually stayed up in Palm Cove, which I haven't done before, the night before the race, um, which gave me some sort of respite from the, I guess, the, the race venue up uh, down in Cairns. And um, that allowed me to sort of relax and chill out the night before the race. So come race morning, I was really ready to go. Um, I felt like I would be fine and I couldn't feel any of the soreness uh, in, in my bones, whether I was actually ignoring that or whether it was true, I don't know, because <laughs> I feel them again now. So my chest is a bit sore in the last few days, I think. Um, yeah, so um, the gun went off and I got off to a, an amazing start, actually. I think my swimming is the strangest things that from this, I've actually pretty much swimming as quick as I've ever swum. So yeah, I had a really great start in the swim and we actually got a uh, away pretty quickly me and uh, Radka and we luckily I think with it being on Facebook watch we actually then had a kayak so for me I'm not too great with my eyesight so I was lucky enough that the canoe was uh, made it really easy for me to sight and so we actually got around the course really quite quickly and we had a great lead coming out of the swim um, you know and onto the bike it's one of the most magnificent bike courses you could possibly do up here in Cairns and that's probably one of the reasons why I keep coming back and so um, yeah, I mean, I didn't quite feel like my legs, they just didn't feel right. Normally I would get on the bike after a swim like that, that was, even though it was quick, it wasn't super, like I didn't have to push to be on a group or anything. And so I actually had some, I felt like I had something in reserve in the swim in case there was someone actually faster. And so for me, when I jumped on the bike, I was a little bit kind of confused that my legs just weren't quite there. And it felt like there was just a little bit of lack of energy and stuff. And I guess that's the start of it telling me not to, that we're probably a little bit too, uh, we're not quite ready for it. And so, yeah, we headed out onto the bike and we set the race up quite well, I thought. Um, you know, you take the first few hours, eat, drink, get ready for a hard ride back home with the headwind. Um, and, you know, Radka and I were trading turns really, uh, I felt like it was really a fair race we had on the bike um, between me and Radka. Um, yeah, and so somehow, um, after about 120 k's, what was 11 minutes gap at the 75 k mark dropped down to quite close to like four minutes. And uh, yeah, I guess from there, Radka and I had to push home into the headwind. And by the time we got in, all three of us were actually in transition at the same time. 
I um, I just take had taken a slight breakaway with about a, about 10 k's into town, so I had slight lead into transition. Um, I actually felt pretty good though. I know that heading through Smithfield, my legs were great, and I was like, oh wow, I actually might have a good run here, and they felt probably the best I've felt actually coming off the bike. Do you want to eat, drink, be in control of yourself, all right? Yep. All right, you take control I'm of steady, yourself. Steady, I'm steady. Yeah, so, you know, I headed out onto the run and we all saw, you know, what sort of Kylie's run was like. She came and passed me probably the three Ks into the run and, you know, I, I just had to be settled and, and not try and completely go with her. I had to keep pre applying pressure as a returning champion. You, you got two sort of approaches I could have taken. I could have, I guess, settled in and not provided any pressure whatsoever, um, in which case I may have run a bit better and maybe I wouldn't have thrown up and maybe you know, I would have still had a pretty shitty day, but I still would have probably, you know, maybe finished on the podium perhaps, or you can apply a little bit of pressure for what time you can, and you know, maybe the outcome may have been different. Um, and then also as well, I guess you have Radka coming through too. So if, the, if I'm applying pressure and then Radka applies pressure, you, you don't know. And so in the end, Kylie had a phenomenal run, I think. Um, it was, yeah, super impressive. She didn't really break down at all. And so, um, yeah, I mean, from my run, I got to about 12 k's in and started, I was still running quite quickly, but I- Android, let's go! Let's go, Android, let's go! I started to feel like my stomach just exploded, like it was, bloated up and I started dry reaching whilst I was running and then uh, yeah it was a very quick uh, breakdown to, to throwing <laughs> power chucking um, power chucking for a little while and that just took a fair bit to get over because in the 20 odd Ironmans I've raced 20 plus Ironmans by now I'm sure I've honestly never thrown up and so I didn't know what to do um, so I'm obviously you're always learning um, and so, yeah, I just pretty much, you know, listened to people and just grab some coke and just try to shuffle through. Um, the energy never really came back. I think from what I threw up, it looked like I hadn't actually been digesting anything for quite a while. Um, and I think it's really just the body saying, hang on, you've got broken bones. Like, you know, we need to, you can't be doing this. And the, the blood's then gone to where it needs to go to sort of, you know, shut things down. And, and so, yeah, it was kind of disappointing that I couldn't, at least just run a nice firm race, which I thought, I mean, off the bat, I can run a lot quicker than what I did do. So yeah, it was like the slowest run time of the day, but I was, I was proud to finish. And uh, I think, yeah, you're gonna honor being the returning champion and finishing is important to me. And, and especially when you're out on course and seeing all your friends and buddies from all the different clubs and uh, they're there just having a, having a go. And what I can perform at and do for what I would consider one of my worst races, as often these guys would be a dream. So, um, yeah, I got through it and that then creates, I guess, some training for the next one. And um, yeah, I guess from now, we, you know, we look at that and we go, okay, well, we did a big brick basically. And I got paid to do a brick, I guess, is the way we have to look at it and not, not take, think too much about it. Um, get back and get into some more um, specific training. Um, I guess obviously now though we spend a week or two just getting this this all sorted so that I don't have any pain anymore at all uh, and it's not inhibiting any training. Um, the reality of the training over the last five weeks was we weren't able to really train any longer than four hours which in any one session which kind of makes it real difficult when you're trying to do an you know, eight nine hour race. Um, you need to be able to put in those big swim plus long bike days. Um, one other thing I noticed actually on the course, which I didn't expect, was that I didn't actually handle the bike as well as I normally would. Um, and that's because I'd been indoors for three weeks. Um, I pretty much had one ride outside and two little one hour spins outside. So yeah, that's actually was notable, noticeable, which I didn't expect. I thought I've got enough bike skills that that wouldn't really come into play, but it actually did. And I think, yeah, it just took me a while to get settled into the bike. So I was kind of training at the same time as racing. But yeah, on to the next. I guess next week we head off to, to Utah and I'm back training hard. And um, I don't think this is really 
an indication at all of where my fitness is at because five weeks ago I just ripped the hell out of a race and I know that that training is in the legs um, and so you know even off the swim you could see that there's definitely a, a lot of fitness in me and I just need to um, I guess give this give my chest and, and ribs a chance and I probably didn't expect it to be as taxing as it ended up being in the end. Um, one thing I really love to do with triathlon and specifically in Australia because it's where I come from is is to give back and um, so for this race I went out to a school um, in the local area where they had brought together a few different schools to, uh, to do a kids aquathon um, and so yeah I just sort of gave the kids some tips and advice and they had a crack and what was really awesome was that I saw a couple of the kids down on race day, they were cheering me. Even when I was hurting real bad, they were cheering me on. So um, yeah, I find that really awesome. And, and I also notice as well, like when you put in the effort uh, and give back, you know, you get the support back when you really need it. And on course, I, you know, I couldn't go down a, a section without someone cheering for me or cheering my name. And I think that's, I really love that about, um, the sport that people you know it's so positive and that everyone's out there just trying to get you through to the finish regardless of how quick you're going and so i actually then went back myself at night time to watch through my, some of the last of the red dogs which um, is a triathlon club from brisbane that i'm actually a life member of i've had a they had a big crew competing and so um yeah it was really fun i went back and, and watched the, the team finish the last few guys come through and yeah, I think those things are really the legacy you can leave as a professional in the sport is to, you know, encourage others and to, um, you know, bring people through and make it a fun and great experience for everyone out there on the course. And yeah, and I just, you know, I just love it being able to, you know, watch it, people that I've seen and people shouting out to me from work from 10 years ago out on course and, and things. So yeah, I, um, I really encourage people to, you know, not just be so, I guess, mechanical about triathlon and actually kind of enjoy the experience with your friends and pals and get out there and be positive and, and have fun and encourage everyone that you race with. So where to from here? I head back to Brizzy. We'll do um, just recover for a few days. Um, I'm probably recovering actually more for a few weeks, to be honest, to get this, really knock this on the head. Um, and then head over to the United States next Monday for my training camp leading into Kona. Um, yeah, so stay tuned. We'll give some pretty fun updates from over there. We've got a good group of people coming. Um, we're actually hosting a camp. If you're interested, go check it out. Um, it's online on the Trisado website. Um, and yeah, it'd be great to see a few people from the US come over and enjoy a uh, training camp if you're heading into Kona yourself. Um, but yeah, watch this space. We'll give updates and follow me on socials and everything else. And all the very best with all your training.